Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Our Stony Acres. Welcome to our YouTube channel. And as you can tell, a little bit different today than the normal gardening video. And that's because this is the scene outside my window right now. So it has been raining pretty steady for the last 24 hours and uh, we're looking at probably another 24 to 36 hours of rain, which is awesome. We really, really, really need this rain here in the West. We're in the middle of a drought, but it makes it awfully hard for me to get out in the video and film videos for you guys. So I thought we would try something different today. And instead we're gonna do a what I eat in a day video. And I've seen these a lot. A lot of different uh, YouTubers will do these what I eat in a day videos, but I thought I'd throw a little twist on it. We're gonna do a what I eat in a day from my garden, okay? So we're gonna go through right now is the peak of produce coming out of our garden. We're in the middle of August. Perfect time for me to be doing a video on everything that we get out of the garden and how we're incorporating that into our meals. So I'm gonna go through and show you what I eat in a day. Now, of course, I'm not everything that I'm eating is not from the garden. Um, you'll, you'll see that for sure. But um, there's a lot of good stuff coming out of our garden that we're gonna be incorporating into our meals for the day. One thing that I did want to point out to you is we are plant-based and so you will see us using all plant-based ingredients um, in our meals, which lends itself really well to the great big garden that we have. All right, so let's get started. But before we do, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click that notification bell so you get notice every time I release new videos. And do me a favor, we're just getting started over on Instagram. We're getting a good following over there, but I would love it if you would go over and follow us there as well. I try and get on in the stories every day and do a little something out in the garden. And so I think you'll probably enjoy that. So there's down in the description, there's a link that you can click on to follow us on Instagram as well. Okay, all right, so let's get started with breakfast. So for breakfast, I am a real creature of habit, okay? I pretty much eat this same breakfast probably 28 out of 30 days in the month. It's simple, easy, nutritious. I vary it a little bit based on the, the fruits that I'm putting in. And right now we've got a lot of great fruits coming out of the garden and so I'm gonna incorporate some fruit into my morning oatmeal, okay? So the first thing we're gonna be putting in is peaches. So we just picked yesterday our last box of peaches for our peach tree. And so we've got to eat these guys up because they're getting ripe really quick. So I'm going to actually put a couple of peaches. This one's not very big. A um, couple of peaches in my oatmeal. And then earlier this morning, I went outside and picked uh, about a cup worth of raspberries from our raspberry patch. And we're going to add that as well. The other thing that I always like to have in my morning oatmeal is some blueberries. Now, we can't buy where we can't grow blueberries here in Utah, our soil is too alkaline. And so just not something that we can grow here. So have to put the frozen Costco berries in, but we're gonna put some uh, blueberries in as well. So we'll have from the garden, raspberries and peaches in my morning oatmeal. So let me show you what I do. First off, I use quick oats most mornings just because I'm in a hurry. It's getting late today because I'm trying to get everything set up for this video. And so uh, we're even a little bit later today. So definitely going with the quick oats option uh, and uh, that, you know, still good and healthy for you. But we are going to be adding a few things to it to kind of up the uh, nutrition in it. First off, we're gonna put in a tablespoon of chia seeds and two tablespoons of flax seed. And when you do that, you need to make sure that it's ground. Ground version of both of those is going to be much more absorbable um, for your body and that's gonna give us some great omega-3s. Today is also a weightlifting day for me and so on weightlifting days, I like to bump up the protein a little bit and I do that by adding three tablespoons of hemp seed to my oatmeal and that is going to add about 10 grams of protein on top of uh, you know already the protein that was there in the oatmeal okay then we're going to flavor it up a little bit i'm not a big fan of putting sugar in my oatmeal i kind of just let the fruit do it for me but i do like to add a little flavor so we're going to put a dash of cloves and about a tablespoon of cinnamon and mix that all together then we're going to go ahead and add our water and add the blueberries and the raspberries. Stir those in really well. Um, depending on what my consistency comes out with, a lot of times I will also give it just a little splash of some type of plant-based milk. Um, in this case, we're using some oat milk. Sometimes I'll use almond. 
quite often we use homemade oat milk um, as well and so we'll splash that in there then I'm gonna put that, those peaches on top and just for good measure I'm gonna throw a banana in as well um, I'm really hungry this morning it's kind of getting a little bit late so that is what we're gonna put together in our simple but garden full of produce um, breakfast okay so there you have it this beautiful bowl of oatmeal loaded with fruit um, the raspberries and the peaches are directly from the garden so uh, yeah I look forward to this sometimes I dream about my own morning oatmeal I really like oatmeal so let's give it a taste test um, just because that seems to be the obligate thing that you do when you are doing a what you eat in a day video on YouTube so here we go I'm gonna get some peaches and some raspberries in there mmm and the peaches are just like perfectly ripe which makes for an awesome bowl of oatmeal okay all right guys so I'll continue on we're gonna do some lunch here in a bit and uh, I'm gonna go get some work done do some editing on some video and a few other things and then we'll come back and go through lunch which lunch is gonna be loaded with garden stuff almost everything from lunch is going to be from the garden today All right, so as you can see, it's still raining like crazy out there. In fact, um, we've gotten two inches of rain in the last 24 hours. I know some of you are gonna laugh at that, but for us here in Utah, that is craziness. I mean, that is a lot of rain for us. We only get 17 inches in a year, and we've gotten two in the last 24 hours. So a little bit crazy on the rain side today. I was hoping to actually maybe spend a little time out in the garden with you guys and, and uh, kind of do a vlog type thing, but that's not gonna happen. I guess we're just gonna do recipes for the day. Okay, so I did go outside and brave uh, the garden a little bit to uh, pick a few things for us to have. This is a, a fairly standard lunch for me. I, I don't have it like every day, but I'll have it maybe once or twice a week. Uh, and again, it'll be a mix of either store-bought or this time of year, it's almost all garden-related stuff. But it, it's kind of a salad, but it's not really a salad. It's more of a stir-fry, kind of just on a, a bed of greens. So um, that's what we're gonna put together today with a yummy sauce. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this sauce as well. So um, here we go. From the garden, we've got a green onion that we are going to use to top things off. Uh, we've got a little yellow crookneck squash and some zucchini. I don't think we'll use all of the zucchini. We'll probably use up the whole squash though. Um, we're gonna do some onion and peppers, kind of as our flavor, our aromatics, um, both from the garden. Um, and then we'll be putting some tomatoes. I'll probably top with these tomatoes, but I've also got some cherry tomatoes here that we are actually going to put in the stir fry itself. And then I've got some greens for us to cook down. Um, I've got some Swiss chard and some kale. This time of year, Swiss chard and kale from the garden are pretty strong. That's why I'm not eating them as part of the salad. Instead, uh, they're gonna go into the stir fry themselves so they kind of get flavored up and, and kind of taste a little bit of that way. Stuff that's store-bought, we've got some greens that I'm gonna be using for kind of the, the base of this and then um, some quinoa, pre-cooked quinoa and some beans that we're gonna be throwing in there as well. And then we're gonna top it all off with some fresh um, broccoli sprouts that we have been growing here on the countertop. So a lot of good stuff, almost all of it homegrown um, today for my lunch. So let's get started. I'm not gonna take you through all the chopping of the vegetables and everything like that. So we'll just kind of jump over and I'll show you what you do, what, what I'm gonna do here. So first of all, I don't cook with oil or very seldom do I cook with oil. You can get away without um, cooking with oil if you uh, add a little water to your saucepan. So we're gonna put the aromatics in first. So the onion and the pepper are gonna go in first and we're gonna let those cook down for a couple of minutes. Then we are going to add the zucchini and the yellow squash and then we will add in the greens as well and kind of let all of that cook down a little bit, stir fry it. We're gonna cook it for maybe another five minutes um, and then that will be ready to go. Just as we finish off, I'm gonna throw the beans in 
and then we're gonna do some flavoring as well because we gotta make it taste good, right? So we are going to be adding some garlic powder and some onion powder, probably about a teaspoon each. Um, I, I don't really measure, I just kind of put it in. So it's probably somewhere between a half to a teaspoon each. And then I'm also going to be putting in some of this organic um, no salt seasoning that we get um, from Costco. Uh, that is kind of just an overall good general seasoning that we like to use in these kind of stir fries, okay? So that is the stir fry. Then we are going to be putting it on a base of lettuce and quinoa. So about a cup of quinoa and a couple of big handfuls of this kind of mixed power green mix that we buy from the grocery store when we don't have any out in the garden. Um, this meal will sometimes, you know, it will vary depending on what's going on in the garden. Oftentimes the whole salad will be from the garden, but uh, we're a little bit too early, not close enough to fall yet for lettuce and spinach and things like that. So that'll come along um, in a, a few more weeks and we'll be able to do those. Now let's talk about the sauce because something like this, it's healthy and it's full of good yumminess, but it's got to have a yummy sauce on it. And so we're going to do a super simple sauce today. That's just a vinegar and mustard sauce uh, with a little bit of sweetening in it. So is what we're going to do is we're going to take two tablespoons of just regular white vinegar. And then we are going to do two tablespoons of stone ground mustard and then a tablespoon of um, maple syrup. And we'll mix all three of those together and that will just go right on top. So that is our sauce to go on top of this stir fry. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's put this together. I'm just gonna take a bunch of this. So you saw that I've got the quinoa and the kind of salad together. We're just gonna throw these veggies with the beans on here. And it's late again, so I'm going to go ahead and probably eat all of this. So we'll just add that on there. And we're going to go with, you know, then we're going to put this sauce on. And again, this sauce is super yummy, just kind of adds a little bit of a zing to it. And I do different sauces based on my mood, <laughs> but this one kind of sounded good. Then we'll go with some tomatoes and some green onion on top and then a little bit of these broccoli sprouts to kind of finish it off. All right. So like I say, this is, you know, not something that I make every day, but probably two or three times a week I make something along this lines. Um, especially this time of year when there's so much coming out of the garden, I really try to, uh, to do things like this just to use up all the zucchini and all the tomatoes and everything that's coming out of the garden. So this is a great little lunch. The nice thing about this one too is it's good cold or hot. So if you want to do something like this and pack it up and take it to work, you can easily do that and it tastes just as good cold as it does hot. That dressing kind of just melds into everything and it's super good. So let me taste this one. Mm. Nailed the dressing this time. So um, super good. Really like it. So there you go. That is um, almost all garden produce. Sometimes during the year it's, it's everything but the quinoa and the beans would have come from the garden. So lots of good stuff in this one. I think you'll enjoy that. Hey guys, so really quick, um, got a little bit of a break in the rain and tonight's dinner, we wanted it to be something potato based. And so I'm out in the garden, I'm gonna dig a few potatoes. Well, I was glad to get out in the garden for a minute and actually <laughs> I was a little worried. It's been raining so much that I was a little worried whether I was going to be able to get out there because we had this meal planned. Thought it was a nice simple meal that we could do that 
for the most part um, is from our garden. So we are going to just do what we call tinfoil suppers. So this is kind of, um, sometimes they'll be referred to as like a hobo dinner or something like that. You do that when you're camping quite often. Um, we will do this either in the oven, which is what we're gonna do tonight, or sometimes we'll do it out on the barbecue grill as well um, and just cook uh, vegetables in a tinfoil packet and works out really, really well. So super simple and we're just gonna go through and I'm just gonna show you, but first off, I have to brag on these potatoes that I, you saw me digging earlier. Um, these are Yukon Golds. I, I actually have only grown Yukon Golds a few times, and this year we decided to kind of go all out and put in quite a few of them, and I am dang happy. This whole big pile came from three plants, and so I'm super excited about that. So tonight, the ingredients for this are going to be uh, potatoes, enough potatoes to do. We're going to need six of these uh, packets tonight, um, and those are from the garden. Then we've got a pepper from the garden. We've got onions from the garden, and then these carrots could be from the garden, but they aren't. Um, we didn't get any carrots planted yet. I mean, we have carrots planted for the fall, but we don't have any that are growing yet um, well. So these are actually store-bought carrots. We're going to season with a little bit of Mrs. Dash. You could use anything. We could, you know, go with that Costco uh, seasoning that I use for lunch. Um, you know, anything like that would be good. Just a little something to, to give it some some pizzazz and then of course we're going to use some tin foil to wrap these guys up so the first thing we're going to do is uh, chop up some onion we like to put them in fairly big kind of circles mainly because some of our kids don't like onions and so they like to be able to see them and pick them out so uh, we're going to chop up a few uh, onions and, and put those in and then some peppers as well we'll just kind of chop those up uh, into pretty decent sized pieces then we are going to cut the potatoes into pretty, you know, small size cubes. We're going to be looking at, at maybe an inch, inch and a half cubes. You want to get them fairly small because they, they've got to cook all the way through. And so you don't want big, super thick pieces. And so kind of, kind of the same size as you would use if you were like making mashed potatoes or something like that. You're going to cut those up. And then the same with the carrots. You actually want to cut the carrots fairly small because they um, are the thing that are going to take the longest to cook. And so you want to make sure that those carrots are pretty thin so that they will get done. Then all we do is kind of put everything together. And the nice thing about the garden grown potatoes is we, we don't need to worry about pesticides on the skins at all. And so we're just gonna leave the skins on the potatoes. We're gonna put these in some tin foil packets. Uh, I usually cut a piece that's about a foot long and we're gonna put those right in the center, kind of put a little bit of everything in that packet and a little bit of seasoning on top. Then we're gonna wrap that up and then we're gonna wrap it again. So you wanna double wrap it in tin foil. That will keep things from burning. And then we, if you're gonna cook it in the oven, you're gonna put it in the oven at about 400 degrees. That's what we use, uh, that's Fahrenheit, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're gonna cook them for about 40 minutes. If you're gonna do it on the grill, then you want to actually flip them about halfway through. So you're gonna go 20 minutes on one side, 20 minutes on the other side. Then take one packet out, open it up, see if it's ready. Uh, to, the potatoes and the carrots should be soft and then it's ready to go. And uh, then, uh, you know, if you need to, you can stick a little more time on, but usually about 40, 45 minutes is what it takes in the oven or on the grill to get them finished, okay? So let's plate this up and see what you guys think. Okay guys, so this is it, real simple. I'll do a close up so that you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, you know, again, just a, a nice simple dinner and it'll be plenty filling uh, with all the potatoes, super good. And these Yukon Golds are actually looking very, very nice. This is gonna be pretty hot, so hopefully I don't burn myself. Mm, they're like super soft and, and really tasty, so. Haven't ever used the Yukon Golds in this recipe before and I think we like it, so very, very good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I don't know uh, if we'll do it again. Let me know what you guys thought um, down in the description and uh, maybe if you liked it, I'll do some more. We can do a winter edition and a fall edition or something and things that we eat from the garden every day. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you enjoyed my rainy day video since I couldn't get out in the garden. 
Uh, kind of thought it was fun. We'll see what happens. So you guys let me know. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click that notification bell so that you can notice every time I release new videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure you go over and follow us on Instagram as well because we've got a, a good little following happening there and I try to get out in the garden every day and do something fun in the garden. So a great place to follow us and get some more gardening tips. There's a link down in the description for that. And then make sure you check out the Gardening Academy as well. Link for that in the description below. And that's our monthly membership service where we teach people how to grow their own food. And a great little service and we've got a, a good following over there and I'd love to have you come join us there as well. Okay, all right, that's all I have for you for this week, guys. Let me know what you thought of this video and we'll see you next week. Hopefully we'll be back out in the garden with some gardening tips and uh, be able to teach you more about growing your own food. Okay, thanks guys, happy gardening.